Earth UFO conference this year. It was April, by the way. You know, it seems like we've known each other forever because we probably have right. in other lifetimes, Kat. But we really haven't known each other but since April. And Tricia spoke at that event, she gave one of the best presentations I've ever seen anywhere on anything in my whole life. She said it right at the beginning. I have 200 slides, so fasten your seatbelts, basically. Here we go. <laughs> and off we went. My word, what a remarkable woman. Well, you know, and she yes, is remarkable. You were, you were on that plane, and, you, and she did a, a mini reading for you, as I recall. I don't you know said. what her readings are like, but it was for the the duration of the flight, really. Mm-hmm. And, that and you told me was, afterwards. Go ahead. I was just going to say that flight that was supposed to be a two and a half hour flight. And actually, I had about seven changes that wound up actually canceling after many changes my original flight. And then they went back to... They canceled all of the other flights and rescheduled that flight. It was just a crazy day, a very awkward travel day. But they had already booked me on a different flight for the next morning out of Atlanta because there was no way, physically no way, that I could make my connector. So while we're sitting there talking and we were chatting about the conference, she was just like, you know, your energy. I was like, yeah, it's probably pretty high right now. <laughs> and it may not be very positive. She said, no, it's amazing. And so she also read me. And the the similarities between the two were very surprising. Because, A, I'd never had a tarot reading except for one little lady in Jackson Square years ago in New Orleans. And you. And I had no idea what was coming down the pike for me. So when you were talking about that, I was just like, what could that be? What is going to happen? Why do I have to hold on? <laughs> you know, well, just what am I holding the, on to? And to fill the listeners in a little bit, I think probably everybody understands what a tarot card is or a tarot card reading. I do a Celtic cross, which is a very typical and pedestrian 10 card reading out of 72 possible cards in the deck. I count reversals as contrary usually or, or somewhat modifying an upright position of a card. And I had cat, I gave her the option of, as I do with all querents, people asking a question, do you want to voice your concern or question or not? She didn't want to. That was fine. And I gave a reading, which I then had her take a picture of for future mm -hmm. reference. This is always a great idea for people who do card readings so you can preserve it and look at it later. A literal, snap, a literal snapshot of prophecy. Absolutely. So. You heard the reading, and it was all about your business. But what was on your mind was not business. No. And you didn't see a connection. And you didn't know who I was. You didn't know my experience as a card reader since dinosaurs roamed the earth <laughs> when I was 14 years old. You didn't understand that I had eight years of psychic training to do channeling, trance channeling, and meditation and inward seeking and outward seeking you didn't understand any of that stuff that i work with mercados and, and shamanism yeah. and do all manner of metaphysical and psychic thing and have a keen interest in all things esp extrasensory perception all of these taboo topics have fascinated me since almost childhood post-childhood so when I was telling you in that hotel room right before we left to go our separate ways that you should expect an explosion in your business, you were in denial, <laughs> if I may say so. Well, I didn't have any that clue that that was Egypt. actually going to happen, right? And then you got on the plane and Trisha did a reading. And tell me about her technique. Well, um, it was very interesting to me because, you know, I'm kind of a in my space – as a rule person, it's okay for me to ask questions, but I don't necessarily like other people to. And I tell you what, we are right at a break. I can't believe we're right at a break. <laughs> I will be, we will be. 
right back. This is going to be three minutes, and I will tell you what Trisha said. WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Hello there. 23 minutes after the hour, and I am joined by Jean-Claire Broida, who is a wonderful author. I can't wait for y'all to read her book, but we were talking about what had happened in Arkansas, and it was so bizarre because you were telling me, and I don't know anything about tarot, and it was all cups and wands and people in power and all these things happening and you just told me that you know this is going to some this is going to explode your career is going to explode i think you said career my work yes and but you're going to have to hang on it's going to be a positive but you're going to have to hang on and it was all those wands all those wands that are always in in leaf Leafy, yes. which shows growth of an enterprise, a project, and something creative. And I was talking about us creative, all of this creative juice going on with you, and you weren't seeing it at all. Go ahead. No, I was not <laughs> because I was not. I had no clue that things were going to head south. Right, everything seemed in place and working, and then Trisha also basically reiterated that. And she was different because she touches you when she reads, which was also something I'm not great at. Did you and tell me that you were holding hands across the aisle? We were. In and business class? Well, there were For seven or eight people on the upgrade. plane. It was fine. Yeah. Nice. It was, it was, a, it was astounding. And, you know, she was just a brilliant and kind person like you. And 
she just said, you know what? She said, you have astounding energy. And you've really, you know, this is really going to be fantastic. But there's there's some upheaval coming. And it's not your relationship, I don't believe. But it's your work. Your Your work is about to explode. And it's going to be such a fantastic thing. It's going to be so great for you. But you just have to hang on because it's going to be transformational. And I was just like, what are those odds? <laughs> you know? And I believe that was basically word for word what I had said. It was very close. Earlier. Very close. Well, how many within 12 hours of that? Event. It wasn't even 12 because we parted. No, it wasn't. I think we it's were like four hours, around four to noon, six hours and late. then about six hours, well, seven, because we were seven hours plus late. But, um, and not only that, my plane, which was supposed to be a two and a half hour flight, made it to Birmingham, uh, made it to Atlanta in roughly an hour and a half. I had 20 minutes between That's right. the planning and making my connector. Everybody in Birmingham had already gone to sleep. I had to wake them up to come get me. Mm. So... It was really the most beautiful thing that I, it was not beautiful when it happened. Okay. <laughs> it was not beautiful when it happened, but I had a sense of peace and resolution because of you and because of Trisha's forewarning, for lack of a better term. And so when it happened, I had two days before I was going to be interviewing George Norrie. And I could do that because of y'all. I bought every software Aww. known to man and tried to figure out how to use one of them. And didn't, but still got him out somehow. And it was just a wonderful experience, you know, to a few months. Because you know and I know there were epic fails. But your your voice in my head and her voice in my head just were the driving force until one night I just said, you know what, I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore. And that's when my husband said, you're not quitting. You were told this would happen. You were told that you would be successful. You were told it would be an insane experience. And you've worked your butt off. You're not quitting. And I didn't. And here we are having another conversation, which just makes me thrilled because I love talking to you, but I'm taking over the whole thing. But it does validate what you do. <laughs> but it feels good so, to talk, doesn't it? And I just about I'd, that. I'd like to talk a little bit about tarot cards Please and do. reading uh, for people who don't honestly don't know. No shame there. Tarot cards are one of many ways to perform divination, divining something the answer to a question i also do readings for future forecasts where it's best to set out a forecast period through the end of the month through the end of the fiscal quarter through the end of the year for the next year until some event happens so that the reading has sense can make some sense in the readings that i do the celtic cross which lots of people do it's not exclusive to me by any means. There are two future positions, a so-called near future and a further future. And one thing to understand about divination, all divination, is that the forecasts are presupposing that you make no changes to your life and your path in life. We all have willpower and we can use our willpower to change our lives for better or for worse. And we do it all the time. We program ourselves with do's and don'ts. I was talking to a friend last night who really wants to get into public speaking, something I know a little bit about as a Toastmaster. She really wants to do it. She should do it. It's her heart song, as we used to call it in the way back times. It's her heart song, and she needs to sing that heart song to the world, and she will have success. And the same was true for you, Kat. You're singing your heart song. So these divination tools like tarot help 
subconscious minds communicate with each other. It's something that children do naturally. But when we get talking and our logic centers in the brain kick in, 